Hello, I'm Phoebe Hawking, Deputy Editor of The Ophthalmologist, and I have the pleasure of being joined today by Professor Barabino, a Professor of Ophthalmology and Head of the Ocular Surface and Dry Eye Centre at the Sacco Hospital in Milan, Italy. Thank you very much for the introduction. It's a really pleasure to be here today with you. Okay, wonderful. We're here today to discuss the pandemic's effect on ocular surface health, which is something Professor Barabino knows a lot about. So I would probably have to start with my uh, initial question, which was, how does COVID-19 affect the eye? The story of a, a coronavirus and the eye is actually an old story. If you go back to 2003, at the time of the first acute respiratory uh, syndrome uh, due to uh, a coronavirus, uh, at that time, the percentage of uh, cases of conjunctivitis due to the viral infections was 17%, according to a study conducted in, in France. At that time, the, the disease was actually limited to 80,000 uh, people. Now we know that the millions of people are affected by the COVID-19. So what about uh, the, the conjunctivitis in these, uh, in these patients? So the percentage, if we look at the literature, at the literature varies from 0.7% to 3% of uh, cases. So we don't know exactly the percentage of cases, but we know that it is certainly limited uh, to some patients. And interestingly, uh, the number of patients with the conjunctivitis is higher in the severe cases of acute respiratory uh, syndrome. In terms of where the virus is on the ocular surface, we do not have a, a definitive answer. Uh, maybe it is in tears, or maybe it is in the conjunctival uh, cells. Can it be a source of infection? Probably yes. You know, some droplets that uh, can uh, be on the conjunctiva can actually induce the, uh, the infection, but we are not sure about that, as well as possibly tears can be a source of uh, infection. But again, there are some studies that uh, are uh, under uh, investigation and it will probably come to a definitive answer. For sure, we can say that uh, uh, COVID-19 induces uh, conjunctivitis only in the eyes of our uh, patients, which is different from other coronavirus. For example, the alpha coronavirus that is uh, typical of a cats uh, can induce choroiditis, retinal detachment, and uh, uveitis. The conjunctivitis in a patient with COVID-19 is a self-limited uh, disease. The clinical picture is very similar to a viral uh, conjunctivitis, and there are no particular aspects uh, to be considered. The use of artificial tears is uh, certainly recommended in these uh, patients for the clearing effect of this kind of treatment. Thank you for that answer, Professor Barabino. My second question is, what impact has the COVID-19 pandemic had on patients with dry eye disease? When we talk about the dry eye, we actually talk about different things. We are talking about subjects that have a dry eye when they stay in front of a screen, or we are talking about severe chronic dry eye, which are completely different things. So in terms of dry eye, patients that already have dry eye, what they should uh, recommend to, to our patients. We should uh, recommend to keep using the treatment. So in this case, we have to keep using the, the treatment. Of course, in case of steroids, we have to taper uh, down the number, of, uh, the number of installations until we can check our uh, patients. But the, the secret, and I mean, the main point in these patients is uh, to keep the inflammation, the ocular surface inflammation under uh, control. In terms of uh, subjects or new patients that are, are using screens because of smart working or because of uh, e-learning, there are two recommendations. The first one is uh, the so-called REUL 20-20-20, which means to take a, a 20 seconds break every 20 minutes uh, looking at the 20 feet distance. So in this way, we increase our blinking rate. When we stay in front of the screen, we do not blink enough. If we do not blink, uh, enough, there is a, a break in the TR film. That means the symptoms, that means changes in terms of the visual function, and it, it means also changes at the level of the ocular uh, surface. So this is the first recommendation. The other one is uh, use uh, artificial tears, or so-called substitute tears, once, twice a day, three times a day. It, it depends on, on the frequency of a symptom, but certainly if we can lubricate the surface of the eye, we can decrease 
symptoms and we can improve ocular surface uh, conditions. Wonderful, thank you. Um, my final question is, from your perspective, how can patients best be managed in this new normal reality? In this new normal reality, we have to keep in touch with our patients. There are different ways we can check patients in our uh, office. That is uh, an option, uh, unless there are some uh, problems related to the health of our uh, patients. Uh, we have to uh, use all the uh, measures to prevent uh, contamination. Of course, this is uh, mandatory. The other way is uh, to stay in touch with our patients by looking at pictures. We can ask the patients to take pictures with uh, their own camera and to send us the picture of the ocular surface. In this way, we can, for example, see if there is a significant hyperemia or, uh, or not. We can see also if there are any changes at the level uh, of, the, uh, of the cornea. This is much easier if we can uh, use some vital stains. We know that the fluorescein and uh, lysine green can stain the ocular uh, surface. We are not uh, still there, but I think that in the future, for example, if patients can instill a drop of uh, lysine green, and then they can take some pictures of the eye or we can connect with them by using a camera, we can get a lot of information. By using listening green, we can see if there is a change at the level of the lead margin, which means blepharitis. We can see if there is a change at the level of the epithelial conjunctival cells, and this means inflammation. Or we can even see if there is a damage at the level of the corneal cells, and it means probably a severe dry eye. So in my uh, opinion, we can stay in touch with our patients and in the future, we can probably improve our uh, different ways and, and, and we'll have different tools to stay in touch with our patients. And this is very important, especially for them. Uh, don't forget that the dry eye is a chronic disease. Uh, patients should use the treatment in a chronic way, but certainly they need also uh, many different uh, checks for their own assurance and to check the conditions of the ocular surface. Okay, thank you so much for your wonderful answers, Professor Barabino. It's been a pleasure having you. Thank you.